Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here. I hope you're doing well today. Now that we have resumed in-person worship, I'm sure you've noticed if you are still um, doing the live stream that we have begun observing the Lord's Supper again. And if you are participating via the live stream, you may be asking the question, what about virtual communion? Um, isn't there a way that we can do communion virtually? If we can get our hands on some bread and some juice here at home, and we're watching the live stream, why can't we just do communion along with you from our home? And that is a great question, and I want to address that here in just a minute. But first, a quick reminder, um, we have an evening of kingdom prayer coming up this Sunday night. That is from 6.30 to 7.30. That will be virtual, and uh, there'll be instructions in the description below for how to participate in that. Also, I want to give you a, an event to put on your calendar. So July 25th, that's two weeks from tomorrow, we're going to have a picnic here at Grace Church. We've rented a large tent. It's going to be a BYOE, bring your own everything. Um, we'll have tables set up. We'll have some plates and some cups. We'll have the grills fired up, um, but you need to bring everything else, your own food. We're not gonna share plates. We're not gonna share utensils. Um, we're not gonna share food. Um, so bring your own everything, and uh, we'll have tables, bring some lawn chairs, we can sit around and talk, and just be together again. So again, that is two weeks from tomorrow, July 25th. You'll be getting information about that if you're on our distribution list, and if you are not on our email distribution list, there'll be a link in the description below for you to get on that list as well. All right, so coming back to the original question, what about virtual communion? And I think understanding a little bit about the Lord's Supper itself will help to answer that question as to why we won't be doing virtual communion here at Grace Church. And so a, a simple, I, I'm not even going to call it a definition of the Lord's Supper, just a simple way of thinking about the Lord's Supper is this. To think of the Lord's Supper as the body of Christ together discerning the body of Christ. All right, so the body of Christ together discerning the body of Christ. So what do I mean by the body of Christ together? Simply this, whenever you see the Lord's Supper being observed in the New Testament, it's happening when the church is gathered together. So in Acts chapter 20, Luke describes this pattern that has emerged of the people of God being gathered together on the first day of the week for the breaking of bread, which was just shorthand for communion. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 11, which we're going to look at in just a minute, uh, the Apostle Paul is addressing this issue of ways in which people are abusing the Lord's Supper. And five times in those two chapters, he reinforces the idea that this is something that happens when the church is gathered. When he says, when you come together, you're doing this when it comes to the Lord's Supper. And when, when you come together, you're failing to do this when it comes to the Lord's Supper. Um, but in all those things, reinforcing the idea that this is a communal or community activity. The sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper, are given to the church. They are signs and seals of the covenant of grace that God has made with his people. And they're to be observed among the community of faith, among the community of God's people. Uh, this is one of the great joys of being the church. This is one of the great joys of being together, but it's also one of the things that accentuates our sorrow right now because we can't all be safely gathered back together. And so it serves to deepen our longing for that day in which we can. So in the Bible, we see the body of Christ, that is the church, together for the Lord's Supper. But then secondly, what do we do when we're together for the Lord's Supper? And that's where I want to get into this idea of discerning the body of Christ. And I mean that in two ways. I mean discerning the body that is the church, but I also mean discerning the body that is the body of Christ, symbolized by the bread and the wine. And we get both aspects of that in 1 Corinthians 10 verses 16 and 17. So I want to read verse 17 first to 1 Corinthians 10. The Apostle Paul writes there, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now this is pointing to our union with one another in Christ. Jesus is the bread of heaven given for the life of the world. 
he is the one bread of which we all partake that that uh, Peter I'm sorry that Paul's talking about there in first Corinthians 10 so being physically present together is a way of visibly demonstrating our unity as the body of Christ and it, it actually serves to deepen our experience of our unity in Christ as we discern what's going on so unity i'm sorry discerning the body in the sense of discerning the the unity the union that we have as christians in christ as we gather together at the lord's supper but also discerning the body of christ in the sense that we are discerning what the bread and the cup symbolize the body and the blood of christ so back in uh, chapter 10 verse 16 paul writes the cup of blessing that we bless is it not a participation in the blood of christ the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Now, Paul is just reinforcing what Jesus said at the Last Supper. He held up the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And he held up the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. But in 1016, back here in 1 Corinthians, in uh, chapter 10, verse 16, we find that there's something more going on than just remembering right paul speaks of participating in again back in verse 16 the cup of blessing that we bless is it not our participation in the blood of christ the bread that we break is it not a participation in the body of christ this idea of participating in or communing with is where we get the idea of communion and it also reminds us that there's something more going on than just a remembering of what Jesus did for us on the cross. What Paul is telling us here is that Christ is communing with us. We are actually communing with him when we participate in the Lord's Supper. Our uh, confession of faith, uh, you know, building on the works of guys like John Calvin, gets at this by talking about the fact that Jesus is spiritually present to us in the Lord's Supper. He is not physically present. He is physically at the right hand of the Father in heaven. But spiritually, by his Spirit, he is present to nourish those who receive the Lord's Supper in faith. So discerning the body of Christ is not just a matter of discerning what they represent, but also discerning that there is some spiritual nourishment that is offered here to all who will receive in faith. So together as the body, we discern the body, the reality of our union with one another in Christ and the spiritual reality of communing with Christ himself at the Lord's Supper. But then third, I want to touch on this issue of uh, fencing the table. So what do I mean by that? Well, in 1 Corinthians 11, again, in 10 and 11, Paul's talking about this issue of uh, Christians that are abusing the Lord's Supper. And part of the issue is that they are coming to the Lord's Supper in a way that's very selfish, um, in a way that's you know, pretty flippant, that's ignoring that sense of, of our shared union with Christ and the significance of um, the, the bread and the, and the wine and what they represent concerning who Jesus Christ is and the work that he'd accomplished. Um, and so all of that was being ignored, and, and Paul was warning them about eating and drinking or participating in the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way. Um, and from that, we get this responsibility as elders to, and again, the, the lingo is fence the table, but by that we simply mean do everything we can to ensure that only believers are participating in the Lord's Supper. Uh, not that, that you know that non-believers are not coming, that those who aren't able to discern what's happening aren't coming, um, but rather, you know, for, out of love for them, we're doing our best to discern that only Christians are participating in the Lord's Supper. That's how serious this matter was for the early church, you know, going back to Scripture itself. So it's for all those reasons that the church practiced the Lord's Supper when they were gathered together, that the Lord's Supper is a visible affirmation of our union with one another in Christ, that Christ is spiritually present to nourish those who receive the Lord's Supper in faith, and that that is so significant that the elders must do their best to ensure that only believers are doing so. For those reasons, 
Virtual communion is not something we'll be practicing at Grace. So if being here for in-person worship isn't something you can safely do at this time, then continue to feast on God's word as it is read and as it is proclaimed and as it is sung in the worship service through the live stream. Either begin to or continue to feast on fellowship with God's people by uh, joining a growth group or continuing on with your growth group. And may the Lord hasten the day when we can be gathered together to again, again around the table, feasting on him as he is spiritually offered to us in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper.